Well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, we will kick this off. And we'll get him to join. All right. So this hopefully, oh, look at that. I am host. All right. So I'm going to try and admit everybody while we go here. Um, but we'll get started. So I'm Matt Ray. Um, I'm a design advocate for Adobe XD. Um, and oh, this multitasking is fun, You're right? Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about advanced interactions. So uh, I saw a lot of people sharing uh, LinkedIn connections. Feel free to connect with me either on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, um, or wherever you find me. I'm pretty easy to find, <clears throat> which is kind of scary. Um, but today we're going to talk about advanced interactions and I have a little demo set up. You may have seen the teasers. Um, we're going stampede themed, um, with pancake breakfasts. Um, but before we dive into that tastiness, um, if you're unfamiliar with Adobe XD, XD is designed as uh, a really fast and powerful UX UI, uh, design and collaboration tool, uh, obviously built by. Uh, Adobe uh, in Creative Cloud. So Photoshop and Illustrator, you're probably familiar with those. Um, it's all part of that same suite of tools, um, but really designed for fast and efficient uh, workflows in UX design. So I've been using this for a few years now. I switched from Sketch. Um, I've been designing across several different industries for 10 years. Um, and now I teach XD, uh, which is a pretty fun job um, because you get to design a lot. And if you're looking to learn more about XD, because we only have limited time, um, check out adobe.com slash learn XD. There's a lot of tutorials and guides um, across prototyping design. Um, and I can share some links at the end as well, <clears throat> um, just so that you have those available. And without further ado, we'll dive in. So um, this is about my third event today, so my voice may cut out. Um, today, we're going to take a look at this demo file that I have, and we have some sample assets built. Um, we have some interactions already built, but I'm going to walk through what we have, and then we're going to build on that and show you how you can take them a step further and make them more advanced. Um, so the theme is pretty simple. Um, if you've been to Stampede, which I haven't, uh, I would love to. Um, Pancake breakfasts are apparently a thing. So hands up in chat if you've been to the Stampede uh, and have had tasty pancakes or hands up in video. I guess that makes way more sense. Um, so today we're going to build a new flapjack finder for the, um, the Stampede. And I've added in a couple little um, surprises or add-ons that you might not do regularly. But you'll notice this is a website. And at the core of XD, XD is a lot of the time used for designing websites. And you're gonna see some of the features um, that are in here are really helpful for designing websites really efficiently. Um, we have nice integrations with Photoshop. So if you're pulling in nice photos of pancakes, you can edit them in Photoshop, bring them back into XD. Um, and then there's just some, some simple uh, features like repeat grid. So here, I'm actually gonna rebuild this element to start just to show you um, what is possible. So I'm going to just completely delete this. And what we want to do on this page is essentially create a list, right? We're going to have a list, we're going to have a map. And um, I've even thrown in this little stampede radio player that we're going to get to at the end. Um, up at the top, pretty simple. We have some shapes. Uh, UX design is a lot of rectangles and rounded rectangles. So we have those covered. Um, up at the top, I've simply masked an image in a rectangle that matches a hero um, and then use some blending and gradients to kind of merge that into the hero. Up at the top, we have some components. We would have covered a lot of this in a, the past uh, session. So uh, look for the recording of that if you want to get more of the basics of Adobe XD. Um, so these are just one component and we've built in a simple hover state that turns it red so that when we play this uh, and you mouse over, you get that nice hover interaction. Super easy to do. You don't even have to go into prototyping mode to do that. Um, and now XD supports both hover and toggle states. 
um, in the design mode. So you don't have to wire them up. It just does it for you automatically. Um, so we might pull in a toggle here in a bit. And then here, um, obviously when we start the page, um, our call to action is obviously finding pancakes. Um, so if, if we meet people with this nice um, tasty image of pancakes, they want to see the cakes, right? So this little button here is wired within the page using something called anchor links. Um, and this is a pretty simple interaction, but this is great for single page apps or websites where you want to navigate within the page. So when I click on this, all it's doing is scrolling to an anchor point and then bringing me into the cake finder or flapjack finder. Um, and then we can start interacting with it. So to set that up, all you have to do um, in prototype mode, typically you would take a link and drag it to the destination page. Um, with an anchor link, instead you drag it to a section of the website, any element, and then drop it in. And then you can set the Y offset to adjust exactly where you want it to scroll. And in this case, I'm using a fixed navigation. So I want to factor that height in when I place my Y offset to get it to scroll exactly where I want. And so to make a fixed navigation like this, where it stays in place while content moves underneath, oops, giving away secrets here, um, then you can set that as your top layer. Uh, I've grouped it all into one element and then set fixed position when scrolling. And this just creates a nice fixed um, navigation like you will probably see in the web. So, Without further ado, let's start building out our pancake list. And what I've done, um, no, I'm not gonna tell you that yet. We're gonna start with a simple avatar because we want people to see pancakes, of course, um, and rounded rectangle, why not? So we can either set um, our rectangles here or do it right on canvas. And I'm just gonna style this using the color picker. This is not what we're here for. So I'm just going to do it quick and we're going to put images in here. So the style really doesn't matter. Then we can say this is going to be the um, breakfast name or location name. And then we can just position that we can pull down another text box and this can be our location. And what we're doing is we're just setting up a single tile and Part of the goal for of XD is really to give you the tools you need um, to move quickly and design things without having to worry about doing the repetitive work. Um, so I'm just setting up a single cell here. Um, this is going to be the date. And you can fiddle with the styling if you want. I'm not going to be too picky. But there we go. We have four different elements. I'm going to just take these and group them. Now, I could copy and paste these, of course and then go through and override each single one. But I'm gonna use, and first I'm gonna move the Stampede Radio out of our way. And then I'm gonna use something called Repeat Grid. So when I turn this on, I can just drag this down and repeat it as many times as I want. I can also go horizontally. So if I'm trying to create a full table, I can do that and resize things uniformly across the design. Now, I only want one column, so we're gonna leave it like that. And now you're thinking, great, you have 10 of these rows, but they're all the exact same. So next, I'm gonna pull in some training assets or some text assets. And in the Pancake Finder folder here, I've got um, a few text files. So to start, I'm going to drag this pancakes.txt file in and just place it in the breakfast name. And just like that, it's going to autofill all the locations. So think if you exported a list of all the pancake breakfasts um, from, say, flapjackfinder.com, uh, which is exactly what I did, uh, you can get a list of pancake breakfasts. Now we can see here already we know the styling's a little off, so I can bring down the sizing, maybe call this 18. Um, and then fiddle with things. So maybe I'll just take this out. That's a good design practice, right? Just change the data to fit your design. Um, and then we can keep doing the same practice with our dates and addresses. So the address will go to the location column, 
and date into date, just like that. So now we've built out a list. That's great. Now we can take this um, really tasty folder of images and just drop them in and voila. Now our list of pancakes is complete. Uh, and I don't like that border, so I'm just going to turn it off. And then we can even turn on drop shadow. And you'll notice now, if you've been using XD, there's also an inner shadow, which doesn't really help us here, but I'm just pointing it out. So now we have our list. And when we play this, um, we've got a map and the lists. Perfect. But this list is really long, and we don't want to scroll down, and it's also taken over in the hierarchy. So next, we want to make this list itself scrollable so that this whole section is self-contained. And to do that, I'm just going to take this same repeat grid and come over here to the uh, transform section and apply a vertical scroll. And now I can get these little handles. I can position them exactly where I want them to be. And now when we play this, it all fits in our space. Sorry, I should use the show me the cakes button. And we can just scroll through this just like that. Pretty nice. So next, we want to build out this map um, because the end goal of this segment is that we can click on one of these or we can click on a marker on the map and this whole section is going to respond to that action. Um, and so I've I kind of did it already. I built the map, but I'm going to break it down and show you how we did it. So when I play this, not only do we have a scroll group here on the list, we also have a scroll group here on the map. So I've essentially cropped a map. Um, and this is really handy because um, we don't wanna just show a static image. We want people to interact with it, right? We're prototyping. We're not just mocking up a static layout. So to do this, if I take this map and just copy it over here, I'm gonna break this down. So here, In this map element, we have a group, um, and this includes this little expand icon, and it ex includes the background. So that's just a little icon we're gonna get to later for expanding the map full screen. And then I have a mask group. So in here, I have kind of this inner border of content. I have a background rectangle. This is just strictly a styling option. Um, and then I have this scroll group inside the map. And you'll notice just next to vertical scroll group, I'm using a vertical and horizontal scroll group. So this allows me to basically create a panable area, much like the actual XD canvas itself. So this is a feature Adobe uses when they're prototyping their own canvas tools. And um, when I double click into this, you're going to see a major map. So all this is doing is it's basically cropping a really big section and giving me a viewport. And then I can scroll around within that viewport. And so to create this map, I basically just used um, something like Studio Mapbox or Mapbox Studio. Yay, there's a new version. And you can style your map however you want. And then I usually just blow it up on a really big screen and take a screenshot. Um, and if it's high res enough, it'll look great. Um, but there's different ways to work around that. There's also some plugins that will generate maps, but typically they'll generate them in a specific shape. So if you're doing that, you want to make sure it's a really big shape just so that you can get a nice high res map. And then from there, all I did was I just started arbitrarily placing these map dots. If you want accuracy, you can place them at the actual locations of addresses. Um, but I just kind of clustered them around downtown. Um, and near parks. So this is not an accurate map. Again, we're prototyping. Uh, we're trying to get it as real as possible, but the data might be flawed. So don't go looking for pancakes using this design. So then uh, if I just undo this scroll area, you're gonna see that I have a giant group. And this contains the map element and all of my pin locations. Uh, if I was doing this properly, I might name each of these pin locations to match to uh, an element in the list. I haven't, so that's how it is. Um, and then we can just take this mask group and actually we're taking this group itself and applying the scroll group to it. And this is the one with the map. That's just a screenshot. 
this map element is really just what I'm masking the map with. Um, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take this group, apply the scroll area to it. And then I'm just going to place it at the bounds. And you can see, probably not, but as I get close, it's actually snapping to the inner shape um, of that mask rectangle. So XC is really good at snapping things to uh, relevant shapes so that I don't have to worry about positioning. And just like that, it's all set. And because it's in that mask area, I'm getting the curved borders from the mask. Um, otherwise, the scroll area is simply squared corners. So that's why I'm using the mask area, just to create the shape that I want it to have. So just like that, boom, we've got our scroll, scrolling map. Now, I want to make this so that these parts are interactive together. And I pointed out earlier components. So up top here, we have this menu item component. If I was to copy and paste this, um, it's also in a stack. So it's going to automatically expand. Um, it just bounced over and everything here is evenly spaced. Um, so I can just keep copying and pasting, deleting, and it's going to respond. So with this, using states, we can create different variations of a component, a layout, a button, uh, a text object. There's so many different ways. Um, I've seen teams build a component with 80 different states to capture all sorts of things. I don't recommend that. Um, that's a lot to maintain, but it's doable. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this whole content section and convert it into a component. And then we can build states that represent each of these different selected um, elements. Um, so I'm just going to take this all as a group. And this is part of why we set this scroll group to the bottom of the map. And I'll set this as a group. Um, you can name the group. If you name the group, um, XD is going to assign that as the component name. If you don't name the group, you're going to get names like component one, component two. Um, so if you like to be organized, name things. And this is going to be my map section. Or, yeah, we'll go with map section. Um, I think naming layers might be one of the most intimidating things of design. So now that we have that, we can just jump right in and make this a component. There's about four different ways to make a component. You can click on a plus up here. You can click on a plus in the libraries panel. Um, and you can right click or use a hotkey. So now that we have this, we can build in different states. So um, default state is just what you see. And just because we put it in a component doesn't mean that the scrolling areas aren't working. Those still totally work. And the best part is because it's a component, if we copy and paste that, all that same interaction and functionality is going to exist in the duplicate. That's just a lot of, that's too many scrolling areas though. So next we want to basically connect the dots um, almost literally and create different states so we can just start by using the dalhousie one and what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to make sure these are all in a group this is going to give us uh, a nice target we could use individual text elements as prototyping targets but having a group for the full row uh, is going to be handy. So this is going to be the pancake row. And each of our icons are already grouped and they're the poorly named pin locations. So we're going to use these as our triggers when prototyping. And our first, let's just start with Dalhousie. And um, you guys probably know where this address is, but I'm going to pick arbitrary ones and see how far off I am. Um, so we're going to start with this one. Um, just because, um, and what we want to do is when I click on it here in the list, I want the map to move and center that pin much like it would in real life. So to do that, I'm going to start by making a state. I'm going to call this Dalhousie. It's nice to try and align your state names to the thing that you're pointing to. So now that I've done that, Basically, I created a new state off the default state, and it just copied all the parameters. If I was to make changes here to the Dalhousie state and then hit plus, 
it's going to copy that Dalhousie state. So when you're trying to always start from that main original state, make sure you select default state and then hit plus. Otherwise, you're going to copy all the parameters of whatever state was selected. It's a trick that doesn't um, stand out. Um, the other one, if you notice here, there's an indent on the substates of the component. So default state is always at the top. It's always named default state. And it basically is like the parent that passes information down. So in the case that, in, in this case, I haven't over, overridden anything. I haven't changed anything. If I was to go to the default state and change this to red, that will apply to the Dalhousie state. If I came back and, oops, if I undid that, then that's going to apply too. But you'll notice that if I do that on the, the Dalhousie state, that that is not going to apply to the default state. So these kind of behave like components and instances where the, the default state is your main state and then all of the changes can be pushed down, but going back up doesn't uh, work. So you can override each individual state, which can be helpful when you're getting into really advanced interactions, knowing how that works. Um, otherwise, you, you could hit a point where you're like, what is happening? I got shaped everywhere. So I'm just going to quickly undo that. All right. So Dalhousie, we want to make an active looking state here. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is undo the repeat grid. So another way you can do this is to use components. Uh, let's make sure we're on the default state. And this is another example. I'm going to undo this repeat grid. It's still in the scrolling area. I've just changed the behavior. Um, and that same removal of the repeat grid applies in Dalhousie. So all this means is that we can now update the color and style of a single row without impacting um, the other one. So if I was to change that color, you saw that propagate all the way through the repeat grid. I would probably do these rows as components um, if I wanted to do a lot of styling, but for the sake of today, we're just gonna be doing simple color changes. Um, so that's easy enough to do. So here we're in the Dalhousie state and we can start editing what this looks like. So let's just start with um, a simple color change on the text. Um, and then let's just do it all. So now that's selected, we can even give this a border. No, let's not do that. Uh, we'll just stick with red text. And then double clicking into our scroll group, I'm right in the scroll group selecting the image. So I'm not changing position of scroll, the scroll area or the mask. I'm simply manipulating um, the actual screenshot and the pin locations. I wanna make sure these are all in a group because if I just select the screenshot, I'm gonna be moving the map and all my pin locations will stay in the same spot. So I wanna move this group and we're gonna just bring this map pin roughly center, we'll eyeball it. And now, that is centered. And we can even, um, I don't know, manipulate the icon a little bit if we want to. Um, we can make it large, no, we won't do that. We'll just manipulate it like that. Um, and if you wanted to, you could even build in state on all of these map icons and have um, your regular state and then have your active state that adds in um, like a tooltip or something to say, hey, this is the Dalhousie Church Stampede breakfast. So now that that's done, we have our Dalhousie state, we have our default state. So we're actually moving the element in the scroll group. And to show you how this works, let's just start prototyping it. I love XD because you can just prototype as you go. You don't have to export things and then um, prototype them later and then realize you're wrong. So you're usually wrong the first time you do it. So here, what I'm doing is I'm going back to the default state in prototype mode. And just because it's a component doesn't mean the component has to be the trigger. I can select absolutely anything within this component. Um, I'm just going to go with the row, keep it simple. And rather than drag this to another artboard, 
I can just tap on the arrow. <clears throat> and then you're going to see I have tap. I already have auto animate selected by default um, because it's within a component state. So by default, transitions between component states are going to auto animate. And then as the destination, I have that second state already pulled out. I can still go to other artboards if I want to, but I'm going to select this state. And then if we flip back over to Dalhousie, um, we don't really have a deselection state at the moment. So a um, bit of an oversight, but we'll just leave it as it is. Um, actually, we can build an escape. We can deselect it using escape on the keyboard because we have no button. So to do that, I'm just going to hit plus, And this can apply anywhere on the, the state. So here I can select keys and gamepad and then just hit escape on my keyboard. And this is just going to deselect that selection we made in the map. So now we have default Dalhousie. They're both linked up. Let's preview this. And when I click on this, you can see the map just moves over nice and smooth. And if I hit escape, it, I did something wrong. So let's see what I did wrong. Oh, I didn't actually set a destination. Um, so if you don't set a de destination when you're setting up the keyboard triggers, uh, it's just going to say, okay, you don't want to do anything and close. So now, now that should work. So I zoom in, I hit escape and it reverts back to the default state. So that's super simple. And now I can just repeat that with anything in the list. And the great thing is because it's in a scroll area, even if I am like slightly on it, this is it. Yeah. It's like not even quite in view. I can still do that. And it's going to scroll that scroll area to the right selection. So that one's great. That was at the top. Why don't we pick one down here and we'll go with uh, Cochrane. So we can do the same process here. We can create a new state and remember, if I select Dalhousie, I'm going to copy this state um, versus copying this one. And that doesn't really matter here. Um, it's just starting from default gives me a blank canvas. If I'm getting really intricate with my overrides, then I probably want to go back to default state. Um, so I'm going to just set this and you can see how that state reset from the red text. So let's go with, um, actually, let's go with BAMP trail. And I don't need to type the whole thing. You don't want to see me typing today. Uh, BAMP trail. All right. So we'll go back to design mode. And here, um, this is another example of where we can use these scroll areas and the position of them um, to actually change when we uh, move between states. So in this case, I want this to be up top here, um, right where Dalhousie is. So when I select it, it scrolls up and the map scrolls into view. Um, so again, uh, here I did not make a group. So I'm just going to quickly go back to the default state, open these up and you can see in my scroll group, I don't want to move the scroll group, but I want to make it easy to move all my pancake rows. So I'm just going to convert these, um, into a pancake list. And now we have the pancake list with pancake rows. So I can leave the scroll group in place and actually move the pancake group around. And this should apply to all of my other states because I did it on the default. Um, so if I did that on the BAMP, then the other ones wouldn't have the group, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, but here we're gonna take the pancake list and I'm gonna just move this up uh, as close to the top as we can. Um, depending on how you're building this, you might want to prototype it so that there are no gaps at the bottom of a list um, and that it just kind of stays in view. So this is where thinking about the development implementation could be helpful. I could do this, but then if 4th Street is selected, then it's going to be way up here. Um, so that's probably not how it's going to behave. So we'll just set it so it's about there. And then we can set these texts. And I'm just using the I key um, to select the eyedropper. If you're working with the design system, you could just apply these colors from your asset library, um, or you can use the fill selection down here. Um, so just like that. And now let's pick another arbitrary location. 
Um, let's make this one aggressive. We'll, uh, we'll go over here just to show you kind of the extents of our scrolling capabilities. And you can even take it a step further, right? Um, just because you're at this zoom level on your map doesn't mean that you can't zoom in and out when you make a selection. So in this case, let's just take, I like using alt, uh, option alt and shift to get really nice um, symmetrical resizes. So you can see all the map icons, thankfully are resizing. So I can make this as big as I want and then drag it into place um, and really zoom that map in. So now we're both panning and zooming. Um, and just like that, we're all set. So if we pop to prototype mode again, I want to um, make that same interaction. I could rebuild it, um, but I think I can also come here, copy this. So I'm just going to copy this. And then if I come to Banff Trail, never mind, I can't paste it. If you're doing this in not states, um, you can copy a single element in prototype mode and paste the interactions of it. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to copy this cakes button and then maybe this was also a pancakes button, I could paste the interaction and it's gonna take me to the same thing. So if I'm doing repeat interactions, I can just copy and paste them. I don't have to redo them. Um, but between states, it doesn't quite work. So we're just gonna do the same thing from Banff Trail. I'm gonna set up keys and gamepad, hit escape. What's really cool is I can even pair it to a controller for like a PlayStation or Xbox. So if you really wanna gamify pancakes, you can do that. Not that you want to, but you can. And then again, we'll set that destination back to the default state um, and then come back to our default state and set up our link here. Now this, in this case, it should work that if I copy this and paste it, oh, it doesn't work. That's silly. Um, anyway, we're just gonna build the same state interaction. And this time we're gonna go to BAMP trail and use a tap. Um, again, I'm not changing any of the easing. You can play with that um, to create more advanced um, intricate motion, um, but we're gonna leave that off for now. So now we're in default state. We can show the cakes. We've got our Dalhousie one. We can escape that. And then I can scroll, but if it's already on my screen, I can click here and that scroll area is gonna scroll up. The map's gonna zoom in and scroll. And now I have this full cohesive um, experience that like, just gives me this interaction that is similar to the web. And I'm doing it all in a single artboard in a reusable component um, and using my mouse and keyboard, which is really awesome. So I'm not gonna build out all of these because you're gonna fall asleep. Um, and we're gonna move to creating a little bit of a search interaction now. Um, so obviously we have this element, um, people might wanna search for their favorite pancake joint. So what we can do is I'm gonna come back to that default state because again, any changes we make in here are gonna propagate. We'll come back to design mode. And what we can do is actually build in um, a nested component. So our whole section is using a component, but if I double click into here and make sure the search bar is a group, in the group I have um, an icon, I have my text, and these are also in a stack. So stacks are really handy for if say I want to switch the order of my icon, I can just click and drag it, um, super handy. I can adjust my positioning super easily um, and it's all contained in the element. So I'm gonna take this search bar and I'm gonna make another component. And what you're gonna see is on that default state, there's a green diamond. On the search bar, there's a hollow diamond and the hollow diamond represents instances of that component. So even though we just made that component on this um, element. Um, because it's within another main component, it switches it automatically to an instance. And this is so that as you make copies of the main component, um, and hands up if you're confused yet, um, as you copy that main component, um, you always have an instance. 
And so to edit this globally, I can just right click and hit edit main component. And that's gonna put it back on the canvas for me. And now this is the main search bar component where I can add states and edit things. Um, and that's just so that as I create more pages like this, um, I don't have to track down which main component my main component was in. Um, it just makes life easier. So here, essentially we're gonna have, let's go with two states. Um, or let's call it three. We'll have the default state, and then we'll have um, when you have a click in, and then we might show results. So these, let's just say the results are gonna show up. Um, I guess they would show up in the list we've already built. They won't show up as an overlay. Um, so we'll just go with two states, and then we'll show how we can use those two states to show search results um, in the bigger state that we created. So. Anybody lost? No? Okay. You will be. Uh, I'll get you there. All right. So we'll start here with the default state. We'll create a new state. And this is going to be, uh, we'll call this searching. So aren't we all searching? And then uh, here, we probably aren't going to have the placeholder text. We'll probably just have a cursor of some sort. So we can get creative with the different interactions here. Um, Essentially, we're going to have a cursor come in and the text disappear. So depending on how you want this to look, there's different ways to approach it. I'm going to actually go back to the default state and add in the cursor here. So again, it pushes through all the states. And I'm just going to use a rectangle for this. Um, gives us a little bit more styling options. And uh, we'll, we'll make it red. Why not? Um, and we'll just use that as a border fill. And then we can do things like change the cursor styling, change the thickness, all sorts of goodness. So I'm just gonna place that where I think I want it to be, uh, probably roughly there. And then I'm just gonna size it down and turn the opacity down. So it's like it was never there. Um, and it's not because I didn't put it in the component. So here, I'm just going to double click in, select the rectangle. If I click into the stack, it's actually going to inject it into the stack. And I don't want that. Um, I want it to just be outside of it, but still within the search bar component. So if you look here, it's in the search bar component. And on the default, and it just looks the same. But now in searching, this is where I'm overriding the state from the default. So these changes aren't going to go back. And I can just turn that opacity back up and then pull that to the right height. And then I can do whatever I want with this um, segment. I'm just gonna simply turn down the opacity so that this little cursor head expands and the text disappears. But because it's in a stack, I can also offset it while keeping the same separation. So we'll do that. And I'm just gonna move it right up to the top here. So actually, so it's going to look like the cursor head's almost pushing the text up out of the, uh, the way. And so now we have our default and our searching. And again, we can just wire this right up into the component. We don't have to do this on the actual uh, screen. Um, and we'll take a pause here uh, and ask, see if there's any questions, because um, I know this is a lot but let's get this built first. So what we're gonna do is we probably want this to be our, our touch target. We can make the whole, let's make the whole thing touch target. So again, I'm just gonna tap on this. This isn't on an artboard, but we're just gonna build it and set the state as the destination. Again, we'll use auto animate to create that nice rich interaction. Um, and in this case, let's go with a snap. Let's make it snappy. Um, and so, when I play this, we can come back to the page. And because this is an instance built in, we should be able to tap on that and you can see that interaction already. Um, it's just that simple. Um, and again, we could apply that same kind of escape out um, interaction. So if we go back to the searching state that we wanna close out of, we can tap on this, set up a keys and gamepad, hit escape, go back to the default state. And again, that's all gonna be baked in. 
And because these are all set on individual components, I probably shouldn't have used escape. Um, we might need to move the escape command on the other states. Um, but here I have that and I can just hit escape and you can see that nice sense of motion built right into the search bar. Um, and we can even take it a step further. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of stroke animation here. So if we come back to the default state, we can turn on a border for this rectangle. And this is the background rectangle. Um, so I'm just going to turn on a border. I'm going to color it the same as the search bar. So we have a nice, simple, active state. Um, and why don't we even go a step further and use the new, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, but what we're going to do is use auto animate and a stroke to create kind of like a, a wraparound animation that's going to happen um, when we switch uh, states. So in the default, we're going to want it to be basically invisible. But we're going to use these get dash and gap controls to animate the stroke. So in gap, uh, I'm going to set this to 1000. And that did the job. Um, and you'll see it's basically invisible. Now you can see a little speck, um, but you can adjust that as you go. And then as you bring up the dash, oh, this this takes a lot of kind of fiddling around. Um, you can see it kind of filling in. So you could do it like that if you wanted it to. Um, I'm going to set this to a thousand instead. And this is basically as you play with that gap value, um, you're changing the width of the gap and then the dash in this case, as you dial it up, it's going to basically fill in space. So I know that this is about 10,031. So I'm going to set that to 1030. So then as you dial this down, it's all there. So we're just gonna set that back to zero for the default state. And then in here, we can set this to 1030, one. And so now when we play this, not only is it gonna give the cursor animation, but the whole thing's gonna kind of spin around and highlight that um, input. Um, and then finally, let's just give it a little bit more of a drop shadow. So we'll select that, come down to our effects. It has a drop shadow, but we'll give it a little bit more, uh, make it a little darker, and then it can stand out. Okay, so we have our search bar now. Um, and what we can do, we can add in um, some text if we want to create a third state that says um, the actual results. So why don't we do that? Um, and then we'll just complete this interaction. So in this case, I wanna go from the searching state because it's a build off of that state. So I'm gonna select this, hit plus, new state, and say um, term entered. And then what I can do is I can move this cursor over um, and I probably want to go back to my default state, copy this, and then paste it in. And um, this can be my search term. And the reason I'm doing it in the default state is just so that I have this invisible element that I can use. Um, and let's just say, uh, bam, is going to be my search term. So now I can basically bring this back, align it up here, and then uh, drop the opacity and forget about it in the default state. And then in term entered, you can see it's already there. So I can just bring it up and position my playhead or my cursor. Should probably be about there. So now what we can do is from that searching state, we can actually build an interaction and we can select anything here because what we're going to do is use the keyboard again and say, um, as I type B and you notice, I can't type a whole word. I'm just going to start with, um, B and it's going to auto animate to term entered. 
And then in term entered, um, let's just simulate using backspace. So on the cursor head, I'll use delete and use back to searching. So now I have this full complete lineup. So when I come here, I can click in, start searching. If I hit B, it's gonna show me that search term. And then if I hit delete, it's gonna clear that as well. Next, we wanna build on to um, this behavior. And I did it a little bit different. Um, there's ways to use this in the full component. I'm actually just gonna add an overlay um, over our existing list to show a slightly different view um, of search results. Um, and you could build this. What you would do is rather than putting the interactions on the actual search field itself, um, you can build it onto this major section component. But before we go there, I know there's a lot of chatter in the chat. Um, Lewis, is there any uh, questions that are standing out that have yet to be answered? Well, the main question so far is uh, when the video is going to be up and how you are going to get the, the files out to everybody. So I guess we all are looking forward to, to rewatch this, uh, this presentation. And uh, just so everybody knows, uh, I'm going to put it on LinkedIn. I'm going to put it on Meetup. And we also have a, a YouTube channel. That, so it's more like an archive of every, every conversation that we have. And uh, if uh, you don't want to, let's say, lose track of, of that, uh, Meetup has a way to send uh, messages to everybody that was uh, RSVPing from there. So if you haven't, maybe uh, you can go there and um, just uh, RSVP so I can get a way to send uh, any message to you. LinkedIn and, and Meetup do not offer or share a, a direct uh, bulk way to send emails. So, Maybe that's it. That's the simplest way and easiest way for you to get uh, that information in your mailbox. But uh, let's open the channel maybe to, to have more questions related to the prototype and anything that Matt is sharing. Yeah, I see a couple. And if you follow me um, on Twitter or LinkedIn, I can try and post that those assets as well. Uh, I know this is a lot. Um, advanced interactions can you can do so much, but there's only so much time. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that section there. I have one more uh, cool little thing to show you, um, but I'll address some of these questions um, first. So you see, there's a question from Naman on uh, if you do interactions on instances, the main component automatically adapts that interaction. So um, I think you're thinking of it backwards. So in this case, if I had set up and there, there's, this is a great question because there's two different ways to apply um, interactions. So here, remember, this is our main component for the search, um, search bar. Inside this is an instance. And I set all of our interactions here on the main component. So when you want to set an interaction globally, um, so for instance, if I'm setting up this show me the cakes button and it's always going to take me to the same destination when I do that action. That's that's a global interaction for that component. It is a button. So in reality, a button's probably not going to receive a global interaction. The global interaction it might have is a hover state because you're changing those the, the properties. You're not going to a specific destination. So when you're setting something global that's always going to go to the same destination or have the same behavior, set it on your main component. That's going to save you time. If you're doing something um, that is local, these are kind of the terms, you're not going to see these terms in XD, but this is how I like to describe it. If you're doing something local or one-off with an instance, uh, you set it on the instance. So in this case, if I wanted this to behave differently for some reason, um, and uh, have like a different animation or interaction, I would set it on that instance because it only belongs to that instance. It doesn't go back to the main component. So yeah, anytime you're making a change and you want it to apply to all your instances, you do it on the main. Um, and then from Chloe, aside from the escape command, can we have a click command too? I think that's more natural. Totally. Um, and you can set, you can stack interactions um, so here, 
um, in prototype mode. We have a, go to searching per se. Uh, we have the escape command. I can actually add in a tap command um, and it's going to, going to do the exact same thing. Um, so when I escape, I can go back um, or I can just tap on it. Um, and so you can actually use different sections of that component. Um, so if I tap here, maybe that's going to fill in the content. If I tap over here or add an X to the search bar, which we probably should have, then I can use that to go back. Uh, I just used escape mostly because I forgot to put in any visual cue uh, that you can go back or undo, uh, which is my first mistake. But yeah, you can do that. You can even add voice. So if you want to search for pancakes vocally, um, you could use voice and enter uh, a command, and then you can just scream pancakes and it's gonna show you pancakes. Uh, so there's all these different things and you'll notice I'm stacking all those interactions. So these are all different ways to interact and do the same thing, uh, which takes things up to a whole other level. Um, yeah, you can animate strokes, super cool. Um, I can try and bundle some links as well from the Learn Hub, um, but uh, look for Howard Pinsky's videos. He's done some stroke animation. Uh, da, da, da. Yep, we'll send my file out. I'll, I'll send kind of the whole finished thing and you can pick it, uh, reverse engineer it if you want. Um, and what if you have some interaction made on the instances and let's say you made some changes on the main component, can you push those interactions? So you can't push interactions or changes from the main component, um, but what you can do, and let's just say I was to, we'll do something simple so that I don't fully break this file I'm about to send everybody. Um, but let's just say on this instance, here now I have a blue circle. If I make changes here, um, let's just say this positioning changes, you can see I haven't overridden that property. So that's still going to apply. But then if I make this um, green, this is an example of pretty terrible visual design. Um, but if I then want this to match that main component again, I can right click and say reset to main state and it's gonna realign to the main component. And then when I fix my design mistake here, <laughs> making a Christmas search. Oh, what am I doing? You'd think I'd spend every day in XD. Um, so just like that, now I've realigned my instance back to the main component. Okay, so I'll show you one more thing because we've covered a lot. We want to end with another cool interaction. You now know that you can do voice interactions, um, but we can also use other forms of playback in our designs. And if you remember to the beginning, we have our stampede radio. So I'm just gonna pull this up um, and just actually make sure both of my elements uh, that sit on top are on the top layer. And I'm just doing that, I'll select the element and then you can use um, shift command square bracket to basically change the position in the layer stack. And that's just gonna move it right to the top or right to the bottom. If you don't hold shift, it'll go layer by layer. Um, so let's just collapse some of these down. So now I have my nav header and stampede player. Stampede player, I'm also going to fix that position when scrolling. So now we have our pancake breakfast, it scrolls into view. We have a scrolling list. We have a scrolling map. And when I click on something, it's going to scroll into view. We have our search bar. Of course, the voice goes out at the end. And then when I hit B, I search. Uh, we're not gonna get to the, the full drop down now, but then I'm still scrolling through this page. What if I wanna listen to some Stampede radio? Um, so down here, I can just click on this play. Oh, one second. Let me make sure Zoom is in the right settings. Mm -mm -mm. Let's give it some sound. I can actually prototype with sound and audio files right in XD. <laughs> Just like that, I now have a music player built in to my design. And the best part is that music's gonna keep playing while I do other interactions. So if I click on my... We're headed for Roundup, going to the big stampede. There you go, stampede. 
should have cropped that audio. But just like that, the audio can keep playing. Nice, we've got the hat while I'm interacting with the website, just like I would in a real website. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a, a little tink at the end because I added a pause sound as well to end the animation. So to do that, again, we're just using a component. It has two states, default and playing. And I'm changing the positioning of elements. So in default, all that album artwork is there. It's just invisible. And then I'm moving things over um, once I go into the playing state. And to do that, I might as well show you how it's done so that you can do this. Um, I just have a tap interaction on the play button. And again, you can stack these. So you could map it to a play button on your computer. Um, let me confirm that. Nope, you open iTunes when you do that. Um, but you could set it up to say P or whatever you want, um, a space bar. Um, we are still working within other competing shortcuts in your OS. So just like that, we have a, a P button and that's going to, I forgot to set it up again, didn't I? Anyway, you get the idea. You can hook up those. You can use your voice. Um, and then down here in the action, I'm going to the state, but I've added an additional action. And in certain interactions, you'll see this action with a plus below your first action. And so in those situations, you can add audio or speech playback. And then when you do audio, you can set up um, an MP3 file. So what I'm actually gonna do real quick, just to show you how this works, is we have our default state, we have our playing state. I am going to just create one more state um, that will allow us to skip songs. Um, and let's just do this. Um, I need to make the state first. Again, I'm gonna go from playing because I want this set up. And playing track two. So to do this, and again, it's kind of awkward here because we want this at the viewport height. And so that's what this little line is. When I play this, this is setting the bottom of my viewport. You can see I could go a pixel or two down. So here I have playing track two. I'm gonna want some album art. So let's go tragically hip. And we'll call this one Skeleton Park, one of their hard to find releases unrelated to the, uh, the stampede, but it's a track I have. So here we're in playing track two, we'll go back to playing. And here we can just hit on this um, next button. We'll use a tap. And again, we're gonna set this to playing track two. Um, we'll go back to just a regular ease in. And you can see what I mean here. This is where that action plus is. So here I'm just going to go add a new file and select another MP3. So now I have that in here. And so that's going to start playing when I move to track two, but then I want to be able to pause this. So I'm going to come back, tap, go back to the default state. Um, and of course, depending on how you want to set this up, you're going to change how you structure this component. Now, because it's in a component, the audio will keep playing even as you move between states. So to fake the pause, I'm actually adding another audio playback with this tick sound um, to stop playing the audio. So if I did this correctly, if we go back to our default state, we should be able to play. Mm -hmm get the first track and then skip tracks and the next sound will keep playing and then when I pause it it stops playing now we could add the, the previous button interaction we could add in some scrubbing if we wanted to um, there's a lot we can do but the fact that we have audio embedded just makes it so much cooler so I'll wrap up there and see if we have any questions because uh, we're at, at about 10 after. Um, yeah, so fire away. Um, I'll take a look here at chat, but if you want to unmute your mic, maybe, I don't know how you want to do that, Lewis. Um, but if you want to un unmute your mic and ask a question too, we can do that. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So as long as uh, we all take uh, turns to talk, I, I think mm -hmm. it's much more interactive to to bring, uh, yeah, people people on the call. So we have Shanice. Please let me know if this is the way the right way to pronounce your name. When should you use toggle instead of new state? Great question. So um, let's see here. We can do it on this little um, magnifying glass. So here, I'm just going to, we're going to make a quick little interaction that when I click on that, it expands into a search bar. So when it happens, I want that ticket button to move over. So I'm just going to group this, turn on stacks, and you're going to see that in action. So, and actually we're going to make this all a component just so that it moves. So default, we're going to set up toggle state. So toggle state is great, um, hovers great for mousing over. So when you just move over and hover on a button, it'll create that. Toggle state is the same thing, just click. So moving between A and B. And it'll always work from the default state of something to the toggle state of something. And the lightning bolt means that you don't need prototyping, basically. So with the toggle state, um, I'll just basically resize this. We're not going to do anything fancy here. Uh, I can move this over. I could add text, but we're not going to for the sake of time. So now we have default and toggle. And what you're going to notice is I'm not going to prototyping mode. I'm just going to play this interaction and click on it. So just like that, I've created a toggle state without linking things together. So if you have toggle switches, um, switches it's great for switches um but like drop down menus open and close states um technically it could work here if i had a toggle state on these to open them um, there's a lot of different options but it's just one of two now um, and i believe there's more to come on these pre-packaged um, state interactions uh, just to make things so much faster for you um so i just have another quick question about toggle sure. So you mentioned something like drop down menu. So let's say like explore, I want to toggle that to show menu. Can I have components in that menu that is clickable that are different instances of like a different component? Or would that be like not as convenient as a new state? Um, okay, rephrase that one more time to make sure I, I got it right. So, so you like, can build a toggle state on this component but then you're asking about other toggle states within it? No, it's more like um, toggling it to open the menu mm -hmm. and like drop down menu that's open are actually clickable links to like a different page. Yeah. Or yeah, something. Yeah. Like. So we'll take this, um, I'll just build a new state. And in this case, we'll go, oh, totally did what? Never mind. Ignore what I just did. I'm going to create a toggle state and then in here, um, and this might be a little messy. How do I have this set up? Um, in here, I'll just draw a, ah, this is a stack, isn't it? One sec, let me, let me create a new one um, that's built better. Um, so here we have explore. Ah, it's getting late. So we'll just build this. What am I doing? We'll build this right here. And um, we'll make it big. And so I'm just going to make this a component. We'll skip the hover state. We'll just make a toggle state. And then in here, I can maybe add in just a really crude drop down section, uh, hide the border, give it a shadow. So just like that, <clears throat> this is our second state. And again, we can apply that to the default state if we want to use some animation. So I'll do that. I'll click in, I'll do this. Um, and then we can even like resize it and change the opacity. getting there. And then toggle state, we'll just take that, resize it, turn up the opacity. And then 
it's going to work. It's going to go between two states using auto animate automatically. Just like that. And then what I can do, <clears throat> excuse me, is in the toggle state, I can like have other text links. This is not best practice. I'm doing this, um, but you have that. And then in those links, then I can go to prototype mode and link these together. So if this was going over here, and then we'll set that back to default. So then here I can toggle that open and then click on that and it's gonna go to the other page. So I think that's what you're asking. Yeah. And you can override all of those links. So that's an example of where if I was building a component for each of these, um, the toggle state itself, I would set globally on the component, but then the individual links within the dropdown, I would set on each instance um, because they're going to be different on each of these menus, if that makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Wow. Uh, a few paragraphs here. Um, mm -mm -mm. Correct. Yeah. Patrick, that's a good point. Um, you're not always going to get this crazy in depth, um, but when you're trying to um, prototype an interaction, some of these you might do more in isolation. Um, so you might be looking at the music player and saying, okay, what happens when we hit play? Um, and how can we kind of mock that up? Um, so you might not build a robust one. I've built full replicas of websites um, or at least of like future plans of web apps and websites using XD. Um, and it's a great communication tool when you're talking to like sales or, or product uh, or like support teams because then you can walk through them walk through it with them and get um, better feedback but it can be a lot to go and, and build it all out but with components you can you can save a lot of time doing that um but yeah martha good point it's good for clarity with development teams um everyone kind of sees and, and understands things differently so um, often doing this visually what i'll do is i'll build it out and then I'll even, when I go to play it, record a voiceover and record myself going through the interactions and talking about them. And that tends to be just a, like a home run for handing off to development teams because they can see me go through it. They can play and pause the video and I'm giving them commentary as I'm interacting with it. So it's much better than just handing off a spec sheet. Um, but you can also do that in XD. Any videos on how this design is built from scratch? No, but if I get a free evening, maybe there could be. Um, da, da, da. Which pieces of this get exported to the developer? Um, <clears throat> so currently, when you hand something like this off, it's gonna show them what the interaction is and then they can click on it. Um, they can click on a component and see all the different state uh, variations. Um, that's something the team is looking at and working on. Um, the problem with it is um, when you're doing interactions like this, depending on the code or the language that you're working in, how you build that is going to be very different. So at this point, um, it's we're kind of of the mindset of the developer is going to know best how to implement that in their code. We're going to give them as much information as we can to guide in that. Um, but more will be coming. Um, the developer handoff mode is a constant work in progress. Um, and as we add new features, we have to try and keep up with that in the, uh, in the spec side. Um, feel more confident now. Excellent. XD has a developer option in the share section. We're checking it out. Yep. Um, and I can go, go through that too. Um, so on the question of de developers exporting the images um, in the layers panel, um, you can actually set any of your groups or elements using this little icon down here. This is the mark for export icon. So when you do that, you can specify which assets you want to be able to have developers to export. 
Um, and then when you do the um, share for development, you can check a box that says include um, downloadable assets. So it's going to take all of those batch export options and make them available in uh, PNG, JPEG, and then if they're vector SVG and PDF, I believe. Um, so you have some flexibility. You can contain them all in the share sheet rather than sending them back and forth on Slack or, or Teams. Um, best practices for organizing and designing content in XD. Um, don't follow a lot of the things I did today. Name your layers, um, use proper groups. Uh, when you're moving fast, things end up like this. Um, and when you're, if you're designing with the intent of prototyping and auto animate, naming your layers, um, in a nice clear readable way can really help you and it'll help auto animate um, because auto animate uses layer names to say okay this is this this is this um, and then this is how it's changing between these two states um, so often when you have a lot of things like component 2-1 group 19 sometimes when you copy and paste them those integers will go up and then you'll have the same thing that's group 19 and group 20 and visually you think they're the same uh, but auto animates like, yo, dude, these are completely different. I don't know what to do with these. Um, so name your layers. It helps everybody. It helps developers later because they can go through and actually drill down in your design with a right click. Um, and if you have things named appropriately, it's going to make things much clearer. If you're like, um, instead of mass group one, you say this is the hero section, things like that. And then this can be my background image or or whatnot so it just helps everybody to try and name your layers yeah um, and then on the page um, there's some stuff coming that will help more um, that's about all I can say but um, what I like to do is use these flows so um, if I'm building different sections uh, I can flag things in prototype mode as a home screen so I've already named my artboard home screen. Um, this can be like the finder flow. And it's going to take any screens that are connected to it in prototyping mode and make them one flow. And then I can drag that whole flow around um, on the screen. So I like to just use those because it kind of gives me clear sections and then I can move it up here. Um, I'll also sometimes draw rectangles and lock them onto the uh, pasteboard, which is the gray canvas, um, just to give myself to find sections. Yeah, uh, the recording is amazing. I, I use it all the time. Uh, it doesn't work on Windows. There's other ways to use it, but there's uh, OS level limitations. Uh, but on Mac, you can record with your microphone. All right, I think I got, oh, nope, spoke too soon. So some people use After Effects to do an interaction video on their portfolio. Do you think what we can do in Adobe XD is enough to show interactions? Yeah, so again, that depends on the overall complexity. Um, right now, there's definitely some limitations um, in terms of what is possible, and there always will be. That's, it's not an animation platform. It's designed to um, kind of give you the tools to express those ideas and express those interactions. Um, but in some cases, you might need to go to After Effects to create a final um, like Lottie animation or something like that. Um, so that's not in here today. There's some cool stuff coming later this year, um, just as a teaser, that is going to expand on what we saw today. Um, but there's present, uh, prototyping is a huge focus for the team. So don't expect development to slow down there. Um, there's definitely lots of cool stuff coming. That's just going to keep expanding on what you see, but in the chance that you do need to go to after effects, you can always export your layers to after effects from XD because creative cloud connections. Uh, so you can do that. Um, and like I said, editing an image from XD is as simple as hitting edit in Photoshop, uh, much like you'd be used to in like Lightroom or um, Illustrator, I think. Um, 
But yeah, any kind of like looping animation, you're probably going to want to do in After Effects today. Let's design a team effort or process with many. We're getting deep. We're, uh, it's collaborative process. Uh, design is hard to do in a silo for sure. Uh, Naman, I can't answer your question. Um, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, oh, the questions just keep coming. Uh, <laughs> Louis, you can cut me off anytime. Um, yeah, that's not a question. It's a comment. Well, what can I say? Thank you so much. I think it was a, a very illustrative session. I think uh, it really sparked quite a lot of interesting questions. And I think that the, the fact that we are all curious about how to explore and, and learn more about uh, the, the features that uh, you presented, it really is going to open more opportunities for us to learn. And uh, I think uh, for us, the, the best way to, to frame this is, a, a Matt, how do we keep in touch with you? you know, what would be the best and less intrusive way to, to have uh, any other conversations with you? Perfect timing. Wow, that worked out. You read my mind. Oh. Um, feel free to, I'm still sharing, yeah. Um, you can send me an email at matt at adobexd.design. Uh, I'm probably most active on Twitter. So today I just had a question on there and I cut a little demo video. So if you do get stuck and I have a window of time in my day, I'll try and help you out on Twitter. Um, but then definitely connect on LinkedIn because that's what people do. Um, and definitely like share your, share your creation. So if you're playing around with this and trying to do, um, some cool stuff, share it to these handles and mine, and, uh, we'll try and like it, retweet it, um, where we can, um, and give you some visibility. So definitely use all that. Um, I'm also Emory 19 on Instagram and hopefully going to start sharing some more tutorial stuff there. That's absolutely fantastic. And I hope, uh, well, uh, you, you use all of you uh, use uh, these tools and then you will have anything that you can share and impress uh, Matt. And uh, I'm... talking about sharing and impressing, I just had to say, uh, uh, I am so glad to have you over again, uh, visit on, visiting us. I, I, I was super happy to see that you put that much effort to, to illustrate the, a bit, little bit of a taste of Calgary as Calgary's stamp it. Uh, it's going to be open next month. Uh, it's personal preference for people to, to do anything around that. Uh, and uh, obviously that depends pretty much on, on how everything else happens around the world. So thank you so much for allowing us to, to have a, a, a safe test of, uh, of how pancakes uh, could be uh, navigated. And well, I hope to try some next year in person. Oh, I'll make the drive. Yeah. Looking forward to that. If you if you if you need a place to crash, you know you can always uh, count on on my on my sofa. You know it's just right here. <laughs> so <you know> me. <laughs> so I'll be in all your Zoom calls. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like I will be like in some call, and you're like, hey, what's up? Hey, Co-working co co session next time. <laughs> Also, I, I'm sorry, uh, something happened. There is a technical difficulty. I couldn't formally introduce you to the call, so I feel a bit uh, bad about oh, this. No worries. I just say thank you for, for all this uh, fantastic uh, time that we share. And uh, for everybody that joined, uh, I would like to invite you to for the next uh, couple of events that we are going to have. Uh, summer is not going to be too active. So we're going to have a networking session for uh, the month of July. And uh, this is just uh, going to be about uh, getting to know each other. And also we have another uh, event that is coming up in August. And it's uh, uh, trying to bring uh, uh, some uh, really interesting stories from a, a uh, well-known designer, uh, uh, Raul Nemes. And, uh, yeah, let's say it's sometimes we, we get to hear the technical side, we get to hear the, the successes, but we don't get to hear all the war and uh, the controversial and these controversial stories that happen once we are practicing design. So in this case, uh, he's uh, been working quite a lot with uh, 
uh, critical systems. So, so let's say if there is any mistake on the interface or any errors, maybe uh, somebody could get hurt. So that's uh, the kind of pressure that he had to face. So I'm really looking forward to hear uh, anything from him. And uh, for all of us that uh, wants to stay in touch, uh, well, you can find Calgary UX in multiple ways. Uh, we have a website, obviously. If you haven't been uh, to Slack, uh, please uh, join. Uh, this is the best way and the easiest way to interact with anybody in the community. Uh, you don't have to be from Calgary to be part of Calgary UX, you know, like, a, I mean, it is right now a, a way, a fantastic way to connect with everybody. So it's just a name. And also, uh, well, Meetup, that's, that's an obvious place. And uh, Twitter, we're not so active in Twitter, but uh, if somebody wants to uh, uh, reach to us that way, that's also really good. And LinkedIn, as you may imagine, this is a, a kind of like a, a one of, has become one of our best ways to connect outside of uh, Calgary and the larger, more expertise oriented community. So thank you everybody much. Thank you everybody for joining.